guys, welcome back to the channel. My name is Miro and today we'll be doing a macro photography session outside in the wild with a macro lens. Let's go. Now to give you a rundown of the settings I'm using today, my shutter speed is between 160th to 1 200th of a second. It needs to be this fast because things are in motion, the flowers are moving because of the little wind that we have, and I'm shooting handheld, which means it's never going to be still. Now even though this has IBIS, so in-body image stabilization, it's not good enough. As for aperture, I'm shooting between f2.8 all the way to f16. Now f2.8 gives me a nice really blurry background, and f16 gives me a little bit more detail on the subject. Of course, most of the photographs are going to be f4, f8, something like this. Now, I never go to f22 because that just makes the background a distraction. Even though it's still going to be blurry, it's just a distraction. So I'd rather have it blurred out. And I do prefer those shallow depth of field blurry background macro shots. Anyway, as for the ISO, ISO is set to auto because in an outdoor scenario, it makes no sense keeping the ISO low or at 100 just because I need to close that aperture down and because I need to have a fast shutter speed. So ISO of 100 is not going to work in a situation like this. I do, however, underexpose all of my shots for about one stop. This way I know I'm going to get enough detail and my ISO is going to be kept a little bit lower. Now one advice I can give you when you're photographing macro shots and little bugs is to always photograph them from the side. The compositions are going to be much more interesting compared to shots that are just flat on straight direct onto the bug and on the flower. Because it adds a little bit of depth and you can really separate the subject from the background. If it's just sitting on the flower and you're shooting it top down, you're not going to really separate it from the flower. But if it's from the side, then you know it's sitting on a flower and there's a nice blurry background. So you might think it's really hard to find these little teeny tiny compositions, but this time of year when it's May and everything is blooming, basically every flower that I look at has something crawling on it. So it's actually quite easy to find teeny tiny bugs and you know things that crawl on flowers to photograph. You know, it's situations like this where I regret bringing just the one lens, just the macro lens, because the forest looks very awesome. And I think I could have taken some really interesting forest photographs. I will try to take a forest photo with this 105 millimeter, which is, well, I've typically shoot about 50, 35 millimeters. This is way too tight. So I'm gonna try maybe and take off here. Which brings me to the next topic and that is how do you choose the correct or the appropriate aperture for a shot? Well, basically the aperture really controls the composition. Now, I think more than in regular photography because we have so such a shallow depth of field that you really need to fine tune the aperture in order to get the look that you want. So keeping the aperture wide open or keeping the aperture closed down is really going to make a big difference. And it's basically all to personal preference. The idea is to really separate the subject from the background and it might be with f4 it might be with f16 or it might be with an f2.8 aperture so you know you just need to experiment and there's no kind of rule to it so it's not like portrait photography where you shoot wide open or landscape photography where you shoot close down here it's a little bit of everything No, but macro photography is not just about photographing bugs. You can find so many patterns in nature that form this beautiful composition. Now with patterns, it's always nice to have one part of the pattern to stick out and you place it onto that rule of thirds, you know, where the lines cross. That's really going to make a little bit more interesting composition. But if you want to have just a flat pattern image, well, photographing something like this, you know, it just works. <laughs> yeah. Now 
I do have to stress out that drinking coffee and doing handheld macro probably not a good idea because as the mind will get sharper, the hands will get shakier. So yeah, cheers. And there you go, a macro photography session in a nutshell. If you guys want to stay on the channel, hit this video over here and remember to hit the subscribe and like button if you like this video and leave a comment down below. So thanks for watching and I will see you in the next one. Bye bye.